Through history, humanity has dreamed of traveling through time. The wait is finally over. We are happy to unveil another of MIT's brilliant innovations, the time machine. We invite you all to an adventure to travel through time. In the beginning, we were all cartoons. I had a crazy dream about elevators last night. Eighth floor, please. What was the dream about, Betty? I was in an elevator and these crazy creatures, I think they were from the future and from a distant planet called MIT. Anyways, they were pitching some awesome ideas to me. Whoa, in an elevator? No way! Geeky time travelers, huh? Moving forward, great ideas came from the oldest of civilizations. Senators, I come before you with an idea for Roman dominance. I give you the Ferrari. People can pitch great ideas, such as nunchucks, without saying a single word. To the amazement of some, to the ridicule of others. But in the end, they have the last laugh. Often, people pitch ideas that make them gazillionaires. Well, to create a new standard, it takes something that's not just a little bit different. It takes something that's really new and really captures people's imagination. And the Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, it is the only one that meets that standard. Oops. Now back to present, where you will once again witness the birth of great ideas that will stand the test of time. All right, thank you very much. I love the energy, it's fantastic. Well, uh, good evening and welcome to the 2010 Elevator Pitch Contest. My name is Jeff Anderson and it is my honor to be your MC for tonight. Thank you. thank you. We've got a fantastic program for you tonight. We had an incredible turnout. Over 306 people pitched their ideas over the last couple of days. And they competed in six different categories. The distribution looks like this. Products and services was the most popular, then web IT, emerging markets, mobile, energy, and life sciences. These 306 entrants represent a very wide distribution of backgrounds and represent a number of academic institutions, six in particular, including Harvard, Babson, Tufts, hey, all right, Tufts, and uh, UMass, Northeastern, and of course, MIT. Woo! I think we might have a little hometown advantage here, a little home court advantage. But uh, as you may know, the elevator pitch contest is the first of three contests that uh, makes up the larger and very prestigious MIT 100K business plan competition. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to the director of this year's elevator pitch contest, Luke Benke. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Oh. Okay, so it's finally here. We've been working uh, for a number of weeks to put this show together. It's so great to see this auditorium overflowing. Thank you all so much for being here. It's going to be a really, really fun night. Uh, Jeff's going to get into more of what we're going to be doing tonight uh, later on, but of course we have the pitches, 12 of them that you'll see that we're, uh, we'll be announcing throughout the night, and, and they'll be delivering the pitches. Uh, and of course, we'll be awarding uh, $10,000 in prizes. Uh, which, is, uh, which is amazing for a 60-second pitch, winning $5,000, $83 per second. Uh, pretty good. Uh, and we love you, Luke. Hey, thanks, Lava. Um, and we, 
actually are really, we're really lucky today. We have uh, two people here tonight uh, that are sort of, uh, both of them in their own uh, worlds, sort of leaders here uh, at MIT. And we're really excited to, to bring them together, which is really what this, uh, what this contest, uh, and in fact the whole 100K competition uh, throughout the year uh, does. And so I'll be bringing them on stage in a minute. I'll just give you a background on, on both of them. First of all, um, we have uh, Professor and Dean of the School of Engineering, Cindy Barnart. Barnart is that right? Uh, Cindy is uh, the uh, Ford Professor of Civil Engineering. Uh, she's also the Interim Dean of the School of Engineering here. Uh, and she is, of course, an MIT uh, graduate. And we also have the Managing Director of the MIT Entrepreneurship Center, Bill Aulette, with us tonight. Bill uh, is uh, an amazing guy. He came here uh, in 1994 for the Sloan Fellows Program. Sorry to date you there a little bit, Bill. Uh, and after that, he ran uh, two startups, uh, turned around uh, another company. And after realizing he had done everything he could there, he came here to MIT to help teach uh, students uh, entrepreneurship. And he's been a personal mentor of mine, as well as I know hundreds and, and probably thousands of entrepreneurs on campus. Um, and so I'm very excited to have, have both Bill and Cindy here tonight. So welcome. All right. So uh, we're <laughs> we didn't tell Bill, but we took a little piece of the Entrepreneurship Center with us tonight. Uh, <laughs> Those are the couches from, uh, from it. So no one actually knows about this, I don't think. So sorry, Bill. Anyway, I'm going to bring him up, and we're going to have a little discussion here, uh, a little fireside chat. Uh, so please give him another round of applause. So this part's great because um, all the people who are waiting to pitch and are on the edge of their seat, they get to sit here for 12 minutes and listen to us talk. So that's pretty <laughs> exciting. Uh, so, Cindy, I'll start with you. You know, the theme of tonight is time travel. This is an actual time machine uh, right behind you here. Uh, and, uh, you know, when you walk through the labs here at MIT, the engineering labs or, or at CSAIL uh, here, uh, it's amazing to me. It actually feels sometimes like we've traveled through time forward. Why, why is MIT the institution that it is uh, for technology, and, and why is it really one of, if not the best, at delivering technology for the future? I'm on. I think I'm okay. okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. So I was, before I answer, can I just reflect on the, this event? I was thinking that you have to do these pitches really quickly, but you noticed that you gave the two of us 12 minutes. You know that facul faculty can't possibly answer a single question in <laughs> any short amount of time. Uh, so uh, let me get back to your question. Uh, <laughs> okay. Some of us can't introduce ourselves in less than 12 minutes. <laughs> so uh, I think there's maybe three elements that I'd like to, to just pick on really quickly about what I think makes MIT so good at this uh, delivery of technology. The first and obvious thing is we have a lot of really smart students and faculty here. That's the first thing. I think the second thing we have here is an institution, not a set of departments or set of schools, but rather an ecosystem of highly technology savvy, uh, departments that all interact together. And that makes uh, MIT quite a unique place. And then I think the third thing that makes it all work is that we have a culture of ignoring boundaries and working across disciplines, working across schools. Uh, it's been a culture that has permeated MIT, I think from day one, and it allows us to make connections in novel ways and then create novel things. Um, I, I couldn't agree more. I think by this event, by having um, b all the different schools represented here today kind of shows that there are no boundaries. And when you go to other schools, you see cle clear boundaries be between the schools. There's a change of culture. There's a change of architecture. But here it really is an institute. And so you have no boundaries. Then you, you go back